Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. Just as a reminder, no Joe and Joe, what, no Joe and Joe weather show tonight or tomorrow or Saturday. We'll be back Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time. In the meantime, at midday, it's in the mid to upper 80s. So we've got light and I guess variable winds. They seem to be coming from all directions, depending on uh, where you're where you are. Most of the wind barbs are from the west or even from the northwest. I'm not seeing any sea breezes as of midday on the south shore of Long Island uh, or even uh, out uh, in southeastern New England. Uh, we are seeing some areas with some local sea breezes along the New Jersey shore. It's that kind of day. Uh, we are uh, looking at um, a rather nice uh, day overall. And as we check out the radar, we're seeing uh, no precipitation from Maine down into North Carolina at midday. A few showers and storms off the southeast coast and off the Florida coast. And also uh, back over into the Florida, the Florida panhandle. And also seeing a concentration of showers and storms in southwest Louisiana. At least southernmost part of those areas is southwest Louisiana and in southeast Texas back to about Houston. Thanks to a tropical disturbance as a low that's sitting east of uh, Brownsville. Out in the Gulf of Mexico, it's nothing organizing here, but it's been just sort of sitting here and pumping up some moisture. Meanwhile, up to the north in the Great Lakes, <clears throat> we've got a uh, cold front uh, that is beginning to uh, move eastward very, very slowly with some showers and thunderstorms there. And as we uh, check out the views from the Storm Prediction Center with regards to uh, today, we're looking at a slight risk up in that area. Uh, and that extends down in from uh, north, uh, the upper peninsula of Michigan down into northeastern I uh, Iowa. Now, for tomorrow, uh, an area of marginal risk has been added for southwestern New York as well as nor uh, northwestern Pennsylvania, the northwestern third of Pennsylvania into, into eastern Ohio. And, and even general thunderstorms now have been moved uh, further east to touch New York City and west southwestern New Jersey. I think I've... Decided to, it might be wise to throw in the chance that there could be a scattered thunderstorm tomorrow evening uh, because of all the daytime e heating. And there's a little ripple of an upper trough that will be moving through uh, that will uh, maybe set a couple of scattered cells off. But it's the next day for Saturday that we do have a slight risk of severe weather going from southeastern Pennsylvania, northeastward, the northern half of New Jersey, New York City, most of Long Island, southern and southeastern New England, all in a slight risk for severe weather. And that's part of that next cold front that'll be, that, that we've been talking about coming through for the weekend. Rainfall amounts, really not a whole lot here. We've got a couple of weather systems in, over the next seven days to deal with. So in total, we're looking at about a half to maybe an inch uh, being indicated in parts of South Jersey, inch and a quarter there, uh, down into uh, coastal Virginia, higher amounts in the Carolinas, higher amounts along the Gulf Coast, and also on up uh, into the Northern Plains. So what we're looking at, I just want to kind of sp spend just a short amount of time here on the upper air, <clears throat> is that we do have a bit of a ridge that's building in for Friday. And for the rest of today, we're going to be in the upper mid-80s to around 90. But Friday, I think we're going to see temperatures in a range of about 90 to perhaps as high as 94 or 5. And then, as I said, just sort of this little ripple that comes through in the upper air. It's very hard to see uh, on, on, the, uh, on the map here. And then over Saturday, there's another broader upper trough from extending from southeastern Canada uh, across the eastern lakes. That's going to move eastward, and once that, that happens, we should see the upper flow shift to the northwest so that we could get some drier air in here for later Sunday and for Monday. And in fact, if we go even longer range, you can see that the northwest flow kind of dominates the weather for most of next week. So we've got a couple of weather fronts that we're going to have to deal with here uh, in the future. But I think the bottom line is for me that the most part, most of the time on the holiday weekend, will probably be rain-free, but there are going to be some periods where we're going to have some issues. So looking at the rest of the day, obviously no issues for the rest of the day. Sunshine, uh, mid-80s to near 90 or upper 80s to near 90. Low uh, to middle 90s for Friday. Late in the day, a scattered thunderstorm or two possible. 
Uh, there appears that the models want to take a little ripple, a little disturbance there early Saturday morning with some showers and thunderstorms in New England. They might clip northern New Jersey uh, and down into Connecticut and New York City and Long Island. That would be early Friday, Saturday morning, like around 7 or 8 a.m. Then we'll get some daytime heating and then we'll see how the cold front sets up uh, with showers and thunderstorms Saturday evening. The front's going to... To try to st hang up a little bit early Sunday morning. The GFS might be overdoing it here. It might, it could very well be further south. Uh, either way, it does start to drop southward late morning into the afternoon as the next high builds in. So even if we start off with clouds, and even if there are some showers and thunderstorms Sunday morning, say in parts of South Jersey uh, down into the Delmarva Peninsula, those will all push out to the southeast anyway, and we should see improving weather conditions for Sunday. And Monday, the 4th of July, to me, looks pretty good with a nice little high, although it's not really showing that little high, but there is one there uh, over Pennsylvania making for a nice day. And taking take a look here at the dew points so we can at least judge the humidity if the... Uh, Models are correct here. We've got a nice, decent shot of dry air coming in on the back side of this. So the dew points are going to be running very high, especially Friday and Saturday. But starting on Sunday, we're going to start to see the dew points drop down into the 50s. And on Monday, the 4th of July, we could see those dew points actually drop down into the 40s. Keep your fingers crossed because that will make for some very, very comfortable air. Uh, just a... Uh, one thing here on potential tropical cyclone two, uh, it is still potential tropical cyclone two, although it looks to me like a low level circulation has developed. So this may be upgraded to a tropical storm later today by the Hurricane Center, especially now that it has cleared the north coast of South America and is in the open waters of the southwestern Caribbean. So here's where we could see this thing strengthen before it makes landfall in uh, Central America sometime tomorrow and then crosses over uh, to the other side. You can see the uh, numer the uh, hurricane forecast guidance is very tight with this almost south of due west movement cross making landfall, then crossing over and probably become, if it doesn't become a hurricane before landfall in Central America, where there's an outside chance it could, uh, it very definitely will become a hurricane when it cr once it moves out over on the Pacific side. So, uh, that's it for weather in five in five today. Uh, again, no Joe and Joe show until Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So we hope to see you then.